So I really did all that 9,000 and 100 touchdowns um, all in like seven years. And so now you're comparing my stats to, um, you know, Gail Sayers and Earl Campbell. They, those guys played, you know, seven, six years. What's going on, guys? This is Brian Jones from popculture.com. And joining me today is an NFL legend who's a former MVP, spent the majority of his career with the Seattle Seahawks, and played a Super Bowl with him, Sean Alexander. Sean, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing good, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you so much. So I wanted to ask you this first. Super Bowl week is next week. And you have something really cool um, going on throughout that week in Los Angeles. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have going on with uh, Stand Together, uh, the Players Coalition, and Cafe Momentum? Yeah, yeah. No, this is uh, super exciting. Friday night, we're doing a dinner. It's going to be our third dinner uh, with um, Cafe Momentum and, uh, and all the groups Stand Together, uh, Players Coalition. Some of the NFL legends are going to be there. You know, Cafe Momentum is special. It started with a, a, an award-winning chef in Dallas named Chad, who uh, he uh, he decided to change his restaurant from just making money, which, you know, no restaurant really does, yeah. to a, a one-year intern uh, paid uh, a paid internship for kids in the juvenile system. And uh, he's coming up with, he just came up with a new way to change the juvenile justice system. And I heard about it. I saw the kids from going from recidivism being 50% to, to now 15%, the kids that go through his program. And, you know, if you talk about the 15%, they're like, oh, great, there's less kids. But the success that is happening off those kids that are in it is just amazing. I've been so proud of some, watching some of the kids um, really take on um, and get their education, uh, take on real jobs and become really successful. So the pop-up dinner is to raise attention because after I met them, I set up the goal to say, hey, Let's put one in every NFL city. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we went from Dallas. We've got yeah. two that have been started. So Pittsburgh and Nashville have been a second two. We're announcing our fourth one um, here at the Super Bowl in L.A. And then um, then we're going to hopefully be on the way to, to create 30, 30 more of them that really just change the lives of some of the kids uh, that have been, you know, they've made mistakes. But some of these mistakes are, are costing more than the crime that they that they committed. And so uh, mm -hmm. I want to do something about it. And now I'm just pulling, pulling people with wealth, people with um, hard work that have the ability to help the kids and people with influence to all come together and change. Absolutely. That sounds really amazing. So um, I want to ask you this next. How did you get involved with Stand Together and uh, Cafe Momentum? Yeah, you know, I had some friends that were um, a part of the Stand Together team, and uh, they invited me to the summit, and I got to meet meet a lot of the partners there. Got a little, got to meet um, a lot of the folks that were doing great work. You know, it's about seven hundred of the most successful businessmen, women, and philanthropic leaders in the country, and um, I saw what they were doing to tackle poverty and people affected by poverty, and I wanted to be a part of it. and um, And they took me to this cooking class there where I met Chad. And I met some of the interns. And then after that, I was like, man, these kids, um, they've got a brighter future than what they what they believe in, or what they even understand. And, you know, at the end of the day, it just takes some grownups to believe in children to change their lives. And, you know, I want to be a group that believed in people. And that's what Stand Together does. When you were growing up, were there any type of programs um, like what you're doing now to where um, you're helping uh, youth that have gotten in trouble and just helping them? you know, find, uh, find their future, find their path. Was there, was there anything like that when uh, you were growing up? You know, I don't, I don't really know if I remember a, yeah. a program like half in momentum, but I do remember that we had a YMCA in our community that we couldn't afford to be a part of, you know? And so, mm -hmm. so somebody paid for it. And I just thought, man, like that little time at the YMCA was, was key. And I had, I had some really cool uncles that were just, solid individuals you know what i mean and yeah. they were they were family men. so my family's pretty big you know if you're like all oh, the jacksons you'd be like oh okay yeah you know, <laughs> okay we're gonna leave them jackson alone we, we was where's a bunch of us but but so, there was a couple of uncles i had um you know that were just really solid men and they always whispered the right thing to me to stir me up to make me 
focus in a little bit more. And this is what I like about Cafe Momentum. They bring in psychologists, social workers. They've got they've got people around. And I'm like, oh, man, what they did was they just brought the aunties and the uncles, yeah. you know, what I mean? so the kids up. And sometimes that's what you that's what they say. It takes a village to raise a child. Like that's mm-hmm. what they created. They got the right ecosystem around these kids for them to be successful. No doubt. And all that's pretty exciting. What's going on during Super Bowl week. And, you know, speaking of the Super Bowl, you played in the game as a member of the Seahawks during the 2005 season. Um, You know, when you're talking about that game in the week, um, what was the entire experience for you like? Unfortunately, you guys came up short, but how was the overall experience of the Super Bowl? You know, it's like a whole nother world. I mean, you you win the NFC championship and you're sitting on top of a mountain for like two weeks. And it's just amazing. Like the fans, the city comes together. Everybody's so excited and proud of their team. Uh, It's wonderful. Then you head to the Super Bowl city, you know, after the first week and and you're there. And I remember the media day was on that Tuesday and it's, it's loud. And you've got other celebrities that you've watched on TV or look up to. They're actually knowing you by name. They're calling your phones and things Mm -hmm. like that. So there's a, there's an excitement about it. And then there's this great focus that's needed to be had for you to be and play well during the game. And so um, it's just a fun time, but it's like two weeks that you'll never forget. And when you talk about the actual game, because I know there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of media, there's a lot that goes on on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, Is the game itself when you're playing it, does it feel like a different experience or is it, I know there's, obviously a lot on the line because you want to win a championship, but does it feel like kind of like it's just a normal NFL game while you're playing in it? It doesn't to me because part of my game was wearing people down. You give me the ball enough time to eventually get tired. So I felt like the halftime was a lot longer. Um, Mm. I felt like there was more TV timeouts and, and and what happens is, is guys just get to catch their breath back. So, you know, you get, you get on some good rhythms and you can kind of get people off their feet and, I was always, I always played my game to be the constant drip. You know what I mean? That, yeah. you know, you enough and then all of a sudden, gush, I'm running all over the <laughs> sidelines. And so, so yeah. I feel like, um, I feel like that Super Bowl that people played pretty fresh the whole game. And, uh, and so, so that's the one thing I didn't notice that was different about the game was that the timing, you know, and the rhythm and you being excited. Like most guys, if they're tired in the Super Bowl, it's because they're there. They couldn't get control of their, their energy. They're too hype, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, but it's not because of you running and doing all those things that you, you play the whole year. Like. Right. And for this year, the Rams are playing the Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl. That game's going to be obviously playing their home SoFi stadium. So what are your thoughts on the game? Who do you think wins this year's Super Bowl? Man, you know, um, the Rams being in our division in Seattle, I have like a little bit of a hatred for them. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, of course. The 49ers, but I just really don't want them to win. But yeah. they've got an amazing team. And then they're going against the Bengals where, you know, when Joe Burrow won the Maxwell Award, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, the, the best player of the country was the Heisman. And yeah. then in the Maxwell Award, the best freshman wins the Sean Alexander Award. And so That's I right. was at the show giving out the Maxwell and Joe wins. And, and we, collect, we connected pretty well and got a good friendship going. And, and so I want him to win. And uh, what's really been cool is actually before this year started with with staying together, we did this skill up program where we raised, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for people in his area um, to get jobs because of COVID. And so Mm -hmm. so skill up's been going really good with with Joe and and the whole program. So loving him like a little nephew, like a little brother, it's it's I want to see him win. But the Rams are really, really good. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. it's going to be a good game though um but the rams should win if you're just playing football the rams mm-hmm. should win but because the game's a little bit different joe joe works his magic he's got a shot definitely going to be a very fun and entertaining game but when you talk about the seahawks uh even after your team reached the super bowl they were able to win the super bowl a few years later with russell wilson yeah. go back the following year uh this past year for the seahawks has been difficult largely because Russell Wilson was dealing with an injury. Now he's saying this offseason he want to keep keep his options open. So do you think Russell Wilson ultimately, when it's all said and done, stays in Seattle and finishes his career there? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I mean, so being a Seahawks guy, I want Russell to stay because it's like I, my little boys, they ask me all the time, are we going to be any good this year? And I would say, if Russell Wilson's there, mm-hmm. we got a shot. 
you know? So that's just how it is. You get a good quarterback, you got a shot. Um, I think that Russell is speaking the business of the game. There's things that happen that, you know, it, it's still business, you know what I mean? And, and so there's sometimes where there is disagreements with coaches, disagreements with GM. Um, they have a job to do, which is put themselves in financial success as well as put a good football team on the field. And then the players have a, a job to do, which is get themselves and ready to go play football as well as put their family in financial success. And so sometimes all the talk is just leverage. But at the end of the day, Seahawks want Russ and Russ wants to stay in Seattle. And so we know that. And so now it's just for them to everybody put down their, their pride and kind of have a real talk and get it figured out. And another quarterback that's won a Super Bowl, Tom Brady, he just announced his retirement. He was actually in the same draft class as you in 2000, yeah. but you were a first round pick. He was a sixth round pick. And now he's just retiring seven Super Bowls later, uh, five yeah. Super Bowl MVPs and three NFL MVPs. Um, how was your relationship? I don't know if you had a relationship with Tom yeah. or not, but, um, you know, what are your thoughts on him retiring? You know, Tom and I probably played in the best Orange Bowl game in college football history. Mm. That was Michigan versus Alabama. That's you know, right. And uh, I just remember, you know, I almost went to Michigan. So, mm. you know, my, my good buddies, there was no cell phones back there back in the 90s. <clears throat> And so yeah. my, my guys that I would go with the games with, I didn't know they who they were and they didn't know who I was was the best player in West Virginia, Randy Moss, and the best player in Ohio, Charles Woodson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. each other. And I'm like, dude, we were with Justin <laughs> for 17, and we just didn't know. And, and um, we all end up going to different schools. Yeah. Randy went to Notre Dame and then into Florida State, then to Marshall. Charles went to Michigan. I almost went to Michigan, which then had to put all of us together with Tom. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it was just fun doing that. But then going in – and playing in that Orange Bowl our senior years. Now, Charles and Randy are already in the pros. Um, I just thought Michigan was a running team, and that's why I wanted to go there. But then I just picked my own gut feeling and said, go to Bama. Great, great decision for me. Yeah. But uh, when Tom came back against us, we were up 28-14 uh, in the third quarter, and he just has a, a wonderful third and fourth quarter, and they come back and beat us in double overtime. And I remember uh, seeing him at the Rookie Symposium. And I said, bro, you're going to be pretty good. And he said, well, he said, oh, really? You think so? Why would you say that? <laughs> I said, well, honestly, as humble as I can say, I've only been in a zone one other time and got beat. And that was one of them. Mm. And so I just said, like, so there's something about you that you know how to win. And, you know, I won in high school. Our high school was ranked nationally. Bama was Bama, you know what I mean? And then I yeah. get there and we got it's like I say, but when I'm in a zone, we usually win. And um, and we didn't. And I said, so there, there's there's a lot to say about you that you can't use like, man, thank you. I'll remember that. I said, yeah, you keep playing. And so we've stayed in touch over our over our careers. And uh, and uh, it's been really fun. I've been telling him that when he retired that my wife uh, I get my wife and take his wife. And we'd all go out to uh, go out to eat dinner together and start hanging out again. You know, last time we did that was was when he was in the Pro Bowls, you know, mm, and he decided yeah. I'm going to play 20 more years, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so it's, it's been good. I've been really proud of him, excited for him to, to retire and, and get into another life that's just amazingly wonderful that he'll be successful in. No doubt about it. And Tom will obviously be in the Hall of Fame. And that leads into my last question. Um, when your career, as I mentioned, you won the MVP in 2005. You've been to the Pro Bowl three times. You won Offensive Player of the Year. You were on the cover of Madden. You were named to the All-Decade team. And there's been talk about you being in the Hall of Fame. So do you think you deserve to have your place in Canton, Ohio? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know how it all works. Yeah, but I, I I know I have to be patient, but I think that if you really took my career, you know, I probably played about seven years, <laughs> you know, so I didn't, yeah. it's, not, it's nine on paper. Right. About he carries my rookie year because I was behind the great Ricky Waters. I had That's about right. nine carries the Seahawks. So I really did all that nine thousand and a hundred touchdowns um, all in like seven years. And so now you're comparing my stats to, um, you know, Gail Sayers and Earl Campbell, they, those guys played, you know, seven, six years, um, Terrell Davis. And, but what happens is you look at my name and you start comparing it to Emmett Smith and LaDainian yeah. and, and Marshall and all those guys played way longer than I did. They'd almost played two or three or four more years longer than I did. And, that, and that's like 12, 13, 15, 16 years. 
And they, so it's almost double my career. Uh, but my stats, they, they, they stick for themselves. And I was on a program that was dead ruined. You'd fly to Seattle, get some good seafood and, and win a football game too. By the time I left, no one was beating us in Seattle. As a matter of fact, right. by the time you get there, it's the thing. You know, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know? so, so there's enough stuff that that I was a part of to make to make uh, make my case. You know what I mean? And it's it's still cool. I, I get treated by the legends very well. When I come in, Barry Sanders or Emmett Smith, they they treat me like I'm one of the go jacket guys. Mm-hmm. I'm just not one. And so hopefully I can say yet one day and then and then go in with all the guys. But I think my numbers and and the career I had and changing the culture of Seattle um, would be deserving. So. Absolutely. I do hope you get that gold jacket very soon. Um, Sean, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Good luck to you on everything and have fun in LA next week. Yeah, we'll have a good time. <laughs>